Hey guys, what is going on? Andos Gaming here and welcome back to the channel. I hope you are having a good day or night wherever you are in the world. In today's episode, we are going to piggyback off the previous video and talk about how to improve game sense. We're going to talk about how to work together as a team to get the upper hand, discuss the importance of using the minimap to help you with comms and decision making. We talk about reading enemy rotation so you don't get surprised and lose unnecessary gunfights. We'll also break down some movement clips when fighting multiple enemies and with that one, I'm I'm really going to emphasize how to reach out through doorways and last but not least at the end of today's episode i will show my current loadout and what i'm rocking in warzone so watch until the very end with the intro out of the way let's begin Topic number one, pushing buildings as a team. As you may know, pushing buildings in Warzone can be really tough. People are often holding stairs, holding doorways, making it nearly impossible to clear buildings effectively. I think there are two options when it comes to pushing buildings when it comes to squad play. Option number one, wait for your teammates and push together. This is super effective and you can kind of just muscle your way in. Even if you get down, as long as your team overall wins the gunfight, I say that's mission accomplished. So make sure when you clear those buildings, try to get the timing right so you and your team can push together. Option number two, look for a jump spot and try to catch the enemy off guard. It's probably one of the most effective ways to push buildings. Of course, it doesn't apply to every building on Warzone. There are a lot of jump spot videos all over YouTube. I actually have one on my channel as well. Make sure to go check them out. I'm going to break down a scenario where I play it patient before pushing into a building. I don't take the most obvious option and wait for my teammate to synchronize our attack. Alrighty, just to paint the picture, I I only have an LMG in my hand and I only got two armor plates. I know our target is currently in this building waiting for us to come in. So at this point, I decided to jump on the roof and try to catch the enemy off guard. I'm playing it a bit safe because I don't have the right gun. I noticed my teammate pushing in as well. So I wait a bit and try to synchronize the attack. Pushed through the window and with the enemy distracted with the footsteps below, I was able to get the easy kill. Next time you're pushing a building, remember to work together with your teammates and try to find jump spots to catch the target off guard. Next topic I want to talk about is utilizing the minimap to your advantage. A lot of people often use the minimap to find enemies with UAVs. However, one important factor of the minimap that is often overlooked is the teamwork aspect. It's actually a really good idea to keep an eye on your minimap to know your teammates position so you can coordinate your attacks or gather intel. I'm going to break down a couple scenarios just to show you what I mean where I use the minimap to my advantage. So right here, I get shot out of nowhere. I do have a hit marker, so I know the direction of where the enemy may be. I get into cover straight away. Notice how I give clear instructions to my teammate on the enemy's location. Oh, that's where you're looking to the right a little bit, yeah, perfect. I was able to give precise callouts because I know exactly where my teammate is looking by keeping an eye on the minimap. Previously, I could tell my teammate was looking a little bit to the left. I was able to redirect him to the right a bit to the enemy's location. Another benefit of the minimap is being able to know where and when your teammates are shooting. When these extra lines appear on your teammates, it means they are engaging in a gunfight. Remember to keep that in mind. You know during gunfights when you ask your teammates, hey, where's the enemy? Where are they? Also try to look at the minimap. Try to pay attention to where your teammates are shooting and that should give you a good indication of where the enemy is. There's also an indicator next to your health bar to help you keep track as well. Now that I know my teammate is shooting in this direction, I want to assist in the gunfight. I can chow with confidence since it's a two-on-one situation. Next time you're fighting with your teammates, remember to keep an eye on the minimap. It just really helps you coordinate your attacks and pick up little details that can really affect the outcome of the gunfight. Really quickly, if you guys enjoy the content or learn anything new throughout the video, if you could smash that like button, that would help me out so much. Also remember to sub to the YouTube channel for more tips and tricks videos. Last but not least, I do also stream on Twitch at Andos Gaming TV. I do have a face cam set up and try to interact with chat as much as possible. It's just good vibes. Remember to drop by and say hello. With that out of the way, let's continue. Alrighty, the next topic we are going to talk about is reading enemy rotations. I always try to think you want to be playing chess while your targets are playing checkers. You want to think a couple steps ahead and make reads to put you and your team in better positions. What I mean by this is it's a good idea to think how people will flank you. Being caught by surprise is the last thing you want when playing Warzone. It's definitely happened to me a few times where me and my team get flanked, one person gets down and we just collapse from there, we lose the gunfight, we get wiped and we lose the match. 
match. But it is what it is. To prevent that, when in gunfights, try to read how the enemy will flank you. Cover your weak spots and try not to get tunnel vision. I'll break down a scenario where a tiny read really helped us win the overall game. Let's see what happens. Okay, just to paint the picture, me and my teammates have pretty good position and it's the final two teams. We know the enemy's location is around the top right over here and they're about to push down. So I play the cluster hoping to catch a target during the transition. Right here is where I realize my squad and I are really focused towards the right flank. I put myself in their position for a second and 100% if I was them, I would split and take the left flank to try to break our formation. You're probably thinking my team has really good position, you can't lose. Trust me, it's happened before, where we have a good position, however we were outflanked and outplayed. Even with good positions, it's a good idea to stay on your toes and make reads on how enemies will push you, just to cover your weak spots. So saying that, immediately I head to the left to check the flank, and would you look Look at that target spotted. And to be honest, this is a good play by the enemy, but I was able to preempt the attack before any damage can be done. Hey, what's the left? What's the left? Kenny, left side. And as you can see, my teammate, my little cousin Kenny, shout out to him, is still looking to the right. So luckily, I was able to point him in the right direction and we were able to cover our flanks. We were able to cover the left side, our line of defense held up, fast forward a little bit, we were able to pick off the opposing team and win the game. Oh. In the next breakdown, we are going to have a look at a movement clip and I'll explain the importance of breaking line of sight and ego challenging through doors. When fighting multiple targets, you often get caught out in the open so it's super important to know where your exit plan is and use movement to your advantage. Let's see how it goes. My teammate in this room gets down so I proceed to slide cancel through the doorway to assist and try to save the day. It's not looking good, there are two enemies, one to the left and one to the right. I need to think clearly here, take out one target at a time. So I decide to flick to the right and go from there. I managed to get the first down, so that's all good. Already in my mind, I'm already preempting my exit plan because I know there are two people in this room. I can't stay here too long. I know there is cover towards the doorway on the right here, so I quickly make a quick exit and go from there. So at this point, I want to make it seem like I'm running away, but I'm going to ego chow the target. And what you want to do as well, you want to jump into the room as far as possible. You don't want to be just standing at the doorway where the enemy is already pre-aiming. So right here is where I make a mistake. I thought the enemy was in this position. It was all happening really fast. When ego challenging or using movement in general, you want to have some sort of horizontal momentum to make your targets miss their shots. But right now, my body is directly in front of the enemy, which is not good. And I'm in the middle of a gunfight here and just a conscious effort, a really good habit is always try to strafe towards cover. This pole here is kind of my exit plan in case something goes wrong. However, I was able to get the kill and it worked out pretty well. As you can see, having an exit plan and breaking line of sight is super beneficial when you bump into multiple targets. Knowing where your nearest exit plan is is essential during gunfights. You don't always have to fully commit in engagements. Use your movement to your advantage. If your body is exposed to two targets for a certain period of time, the chances of winning that gunfight will be really hard. So remember to play with your angles and use cover accordingly. It's a good idea to make it seem like you're running away. Break line of sight and ego chow to catch the enemy off guard. Hope you guys enjoyed that movement breakdown. Okay, so that is it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed the content. Just some final thoughts about today's subject. When pushing buildings, if your teammates are around, just hold up for a couple seconds and coordinate your attack. When you work together with your teammates, you stack, you push the buildings, you're just way more likely to come out on top. Make sure to pay attention to your minimap to help you coordinate and gather intel. Information is everything when playing Warzone, so multitasking and having minimap awareness will 100% make you a better player. Next time you fight an enemy team, think about the potential flanks they could be taking. Cover your weak spots, predict rotations to give yourself the upper hand. When it comes to movement, I've been noticing lately that horizontal momentum is super important. Your goal is to make the enemy miss as much as possible. A good way to do this is shifting your direction. For example, if you fake right and then go hard left, that can really put off the target's aim. It's something I've been working on lately. We'll probably cover this topic in the next episode. Before we end the video, as promised, I will show the current loadout I'm currently running. So for primary, I'm running the XM4. I'm really liking this AR. For me, the recoil is pretty manageable and the damage output is really good. 
when it comes to the secondary, I'm switching between the OTS-9 and the Cold War MP5. Both guns are really good. I think these are the top two SMGs at the moment. Let me know in the comment section below what guns you guys are using. I'm always keen to know. Anyways, if you like the content, learn something new, please smash that like button. That would mean so much. Sub to the YouTube channel for more tips and tricks videos. And remember to check me out on Twitch at Andos Gaming TV. Come say hello and vibe out. As always, I wish you guys all the best and good luck on the Warzone.